and welcome to Great Delton. Now that all the track is finally laid, we can get on with some scenery. So to start with, we're going to be doing some track details today. Track details for me separate a model railway from a train set really. Even when you've got track and ballast, you can still have it look rather plain um, if you don't have any details at the side of your track. Because on the main line, you'll never find just ballast and track. You'll always have trunking and uh, relay boxes, walkways, and then you'll have the more commercial things like tunnels and platforms. I'm going to be doing all of the track at once rather than sectioning it off as I did on my old layout. This is to ensure that um, there's a uniform standard of quality and detail among the entire layout. Some people like to have different sort of scenes, different qualities, different levels um, around the layout, but I prefer to just have the one standard that I can um, adhere to. That means that um, because I'm basing this layer off one section of line, it's going to be fairly similar anyway. Tonight we've just got the 350 on the track um, with the split gear. I'm not sure if you can hear the clicking, but it seems to be running quite well. Uh, just so it's not too noisy in here. I've only got the one train on the line. It's nice to have some things running again. I've got lots of stock that I want to get back on the track, but must focus on layout progression at the minute. So let's have a look, see what we've got. So what we've got in front of us here is just some of the details that we're be, uh, going to be putting on tonight. A lot of the things I've bought recently, but then I've got some other things that are saved from the previous layout. I will talk you through everything that I put on. Um, so we've got things like signals, and then we've got our um, relay box and cabinet platforms, platform edges, uh, trunking, got some masts, and then we've got the old retaining walls from the old layout, which I managed to save. I'll have to look through those, see which ones are still usable, and some of them are quite ripped. And then we've got other retaining walls, we've got some card for some bases for the um, gantries, uh, tunnel portals, and then small little details that we can put in afterwards. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to literally prepare all of this. So that means taking it off the sprues, building it up, painting it, weathering it, whatever I need to do so it's ready to be stuck down onto the layout. And then we can move on from there, and we'll stick down one item at a time, I'll talk you through it, I'll talk you through what it does, what its purpose is on the, ma on the main line. And then um, we should be, by the end of this video, in a position where we've got a nice detailed busy track. Um, to the point where we can actually start ballasting. So let's get on with some of this pre preparation and then we'll join you once that's fully finished. So I've started with the tunnel portals, I've just installed those, so I've got my boundaries of uh, where I need to actually detail the track. Obviously that's going to be all hidden, so 
that shan't need anything. Um, I've done most of the details now. We'll cut out a load of bases for the um, overhead masts and the gantries. I've painted all of the platform edges, cut out all of the trunking strips and some of the T-junctions and filed them all down. Built up all the catch pits and uh, done the same with the platform ramps as well. So we're pretty much there, set to put all this down. I've been around marking up where everything needs to go. All of the black dots on the outside of the track will be where the bases are and all the dots on the inside will be where the catch pits are. Uh, I marked out the longest platform here as well because I needed to measure exactly how long the platform is to work out whether I have enough lengths. And according to my calculations, I'm just short two packs. So I'll have to get some more platforms quickly, but I can get on with some other bits. Um, over here, where the main trunk of the main line is, I'll be using gantries as opposed to the dapple masts. I did build one up, where have I put it? Here. Yes, this is a um, four track gantry by Embrass. They're incredibly difficult and uh, time consuming to build. This one took me about an hour and a half with all the registration arms and the support pulleys. But once spray painted and weathered, they do look the part. So they will come over the tracks like this. And I think I've got about uh, 10 or 11 to build eventually. But I'm trying to minimize them as much as possible because I hate building them and I use the dapple masts where I can. So um, what we'll get on with now is sticking down some of the details. Oh, some bubble wrap. Obviously the tunnel portals are done and there are some more portals to go at that end but I only bought two packs so I need to get one more pack. Uh, that's where the bridge will come over the tracks so there'll be a couple of portals there. Over by this area I won't be doing any portals, they will just emerge into the back scene and they'll be hidden by the curvature of the track. Obviously this is where the cutting will be, so the retaining wall should hide all that. <coughs> so the next thing I'm going to move on to is the platforms. Um, this is so I can get a boundary of where the station is, and then I can work around that. Um, nothing is going to dictate where the platforms go, but the platforms will dictate things like chunking and um, some of the masts and signals and whatnot. So we'll get on with that next. I'm going to be sticking them down with some super glue. I just need to get an indication of how far they need to be away from the track. For that I just usually use a Mark III coach, measure the overhang, mark it out and then have it constant all the way along. Um, due to the broad radius of my station I won't need to warm these up in any hot water or use any heat on them and they'll be flexible enough just to just to um, hook the track nicely as it's such a nice broad curve and then obviously on the straight sections it will be even easier to do. So that's going to be the next job. I'm not sure if I'll film it or not because I haven't got much battery left on the camera and I do want to get some more done tonight as it's my uh, as I'm on night soon. So I've got a fair bit of time tonight in the garage. So we'll get some platform sections down and then we'll uh, join you for the next detail. Just for reference, I have airbrushed these with some roof dirt by Rail Match. Um, this is just to tone down the paint a bit. When they come brand new, they're not quite very. Uh, they're not a very nice concrete colour. They're very bright, and even on a brand new station, you won't find the concrete looking like that. So, just a bit of tone down again, and then um, it's easier to do it when it's off than when it's on because you can get all of the underneath part. And then when I come to weather the track, they'll probably receive a bit more overspray from the airbrush, so they'll look a bit dirtied up. Okay, so I've laid all of platforms five and six, but I've now run out of super glue. This is my preferred adhesive for platforms because it's uh, quick drying and it's very strong. So I need to get some more of that. Um, five and six are the longest platforms. They're long enough to accommodate a living coach train, such as a HST or a Pendolino. And then I've also marked out the um, start and finish points of the shorter platforms for my 350s, long enough to accommodate two units, and then my bay platforms which will accommodate DMUs and 350s and DVT units, just shorter trains really. So obviously I need to get some more super glue, in the meantime I'm going to get on with some catch pits and some um, gantry bases, so these will just be stuck down with some Gorilla Glue. Got them all cut out, and then I've got my catch pits over here. So they'll be stuck down nice and easily where all these dots are. And then what I'll do is I shall paint the um, bases 
in some concrete colour to uh, obviously make them the correct colour and then I'll probably give them a bit of an airbrush as well after they've been weathered, uh, after the track's been ballasted. So we'll get on with that next and then that's uh, going to see us progress nicely towards the trunking, signalling and obviously the platforms when I've got some more edging. the overhead gantry bases are in, all of the catch pits are in, and I've gone over the bases with the concrete paint, which is by Rare Match. While I've had that paint out, I've taken the opportunity to paint all of the track pin heads to make them a little bit less obvious, other than on the points of course, whereas they're the same colour as the sleepers, so you shouldn't be able to see many uh, track pin heads now. All nice and similar colour. It doesn't match the Peco concrete colour exactly, but it's a lot better than the uh, black. Oh, I missed one. Anywho, um, so what I've got left to do is the platforms, and then once I've done that, I've got a couple of signals to put in. Once that's done, I've got some trunking to do. Um, the trunking is awaiting, obviously, the other bits to go in, so I know exactly where to put it. And then the only thing other than that I need to do is some orange conduit. Um, where the points are and where the signals are and I'm going to be having a couple of little walkways um, down the side of the truck near the station so I need to put the bases in for that as they shall sit on top of the ballast um, so I need to put some plastic card in just to raise them off the ground so they'll be able to sit nicely on the ballast um, and then I think that'll be all the truck detail done so it's going to be a few, little, few more hours of work <coughs> but once that's done we can get ready for ballasting so what I'm going to do next is just have a bit of a tidy up. I'm going to wait until tomorrow to do the signals, as it's a bit late now. And then I've obviously got to get some more super glue for the platforms. But once that's all done, we should be fairly um, progressed with this section of the um, of the build. Platforms are now fully installed. 
all platforms from 1 to 6 are completely laid with um, weathered platform edges and as you can tell it's going to be quite a sizeable station. Let me just get the cat off the mount. Just about get an 8 coach Pretendolino in platform number 3 which is good as I only plan to get a couple of 350s in there. So moving along, um, whilst I've done that I've also installed the first couple of signals which are the only line side signals I'll have on this layout. All the rest will be stationed on the platform or in a gantry which will be on that far side of the layout. So there's only three jobs left I think, or four. Um, trunking, and then we've got some walkways to put in once the trunking's done. Some orange conduit, and I think that might be it. So um, we'll get on with that and that will conclude the track detail and then we'll be ready for ballasting. Once I've done that I'll give a bit of a tidy up as I'll use very few tools for ballasting. So I won't need a lot of this out. So yeah, looking quite good and looking a bit more busy and we are progressing well. So uh, on to trunking now and then the walkways and the um, orange wires which I've painted this cable for in some rail match orange. Getting towards the end of the track detailing now before I get going with the ballast. Um, it's been a long time since I have updated you since I've been videoing but I've got most of the trunking in now. The only part to do is over that far side. On the outside of the track I need to go from around there to about here. Um, I'm short of about two packs so they are currently on order. And Once those are in um, I'll slip them down and then I'll get on with weathering the trunking and then that's all done. Um, in the meantime I've been putting in some of these orange bits of conduit as is um, popularly seen on the West Coast Mainline and pretty much all networks. Um, I've just made it out of this piece of evergreen plastic rodding and some orange rail match paint. I've also stuck down these bases for the walkways which I'll be having. Um, the idea is just to have a small permanent way walkway um, from the bottom of the platform ramp over to this area here which will be some sort of substation or signal box where the origin of the trunking will be um, where all the cables for the relay boxes, point motors and signals will be fed from. Um, it will continue down here just as access to the open area of track that will be down here while the ballast and then these will be covered once the, um, once the ballast is been laid around it, they'll then be covered with the scale model scenery, um, graded walkways and some railings, but I've just had to put that down so they're nice and elevated so they don't just sit all crooked on the ballast. So um, there's only one job left to do now and that is to finish the trunking. I'm just going to talk about this area quickly. I had initially planned to install all the retaining walls before I started ballasting, however, most of the retaining walls which I've saved from the old layer are in a bit of a state and they don't lay quite well. But I also realised that it would be easier to do the ballasting and the track weathering with all the retaining walls off um, as to not obstruct access to the track. <clears throat> what I can do is just ballast sort of to this point and then when I put the retaining walls in I'll just ballast in these little crevices here afterwards. It shouldn't be too much of a difficult job to do. And then I can build the bird cage to create the cutting without having to think about removing it again to do ballasting or um, track weathering. So that's that. I also need to get some more retaining wall kits and I'll, that will be part of another video creating that um, cutting anyway. But for now that's all ready to be ballasted as is most of the track. So what I'll do is I'll finish off that trunking, I'll weather it all and then I'll leave you with some running shots. Um, I've got three, no, I've got four of my longer trains on the layout today. I've got my DB Schenker 66 with my KFA train with the C rail containers, which has been weathered by Ant at West Coast Models. 
I've got Pendolino and I've got my Caledonian Sleeper pulled by Revolution Trains 92. This is the Serco D branded um, livery which is sort of 2015 onwards. And then I've got my EWS 66 which is finally running again after a bit of a job repairing and cleaning all the pickups on my Revolution Trains IPA car carriers. So, um, yeah, we'll get on with that and then we'll give you some running shots and that should be it.
So to conclude, um, everything is now finished and let's just have a quick run through of what we've put in. Uh, we've done all of the platform edges, so that's all ready for ballasting around the station area now. We've put in tunnel portals over this far side and over here where the hill will be to hide that banked curve. Um, on the track side we've got some trunking, we've got OHLE bases made of card, we've got catch pits, we've got some of this um, orange conduit as well which will look quite nice and then we've got the walkway bases as well and then we've got a couple of signals that have been put in too so that is the track detailing um, first stage all completed now so this lower is ready for ballasting which will be the next stage and that will be in the next video so thank you for watching today hopefully this has given you some ideas of things that you can put at the side of your track um, to help you out with your layouts obviously it really does make a difference when you put this sort of detail in um, it sort of separates that band between train set and modern railway it really adds a lot to your scenic um, scenic side of things and makes the track just look a lot busier. So yeah, thank you for watching. Bye-bye um, for now, and I'll see you next time, hopefully, with some ballasting.